Good evening. Today, this evening, I was given the unction to ask the question. And the question is, Lord, what is worship? What do you want from me, from us, in worship? Now, all of us have gone to somebody's church at one time or another. And we all have some idea about praise and worship. We even have scriptures which we may quote, such as this, we enter his, to his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. But you see, entering into his gates and into his courts is not enough. And so tonight's message is entitled Worship and the Hidden Kingdom. That is worship and the Hidden Kingdom. Worship and the hidden kingdom of God. Over the years, we've seen folks go to church and have great music. And in fact, I play played a Hammond organ early in life. And the buildings were packed with folks clapping and shouting and some praising the Lord, some shouting, dancing around, others crying and weeping, some folks even getting healed from their physical ailments and even spiritual ailments. Some folks were even saved in such an, an environment. But that was then. And we as a people, as children of God, are expected to grow and mature from step to step until we arrive at the point where in the image of Christ and the image of your life and my life are one. And to the point where Jesus can say, you may go now to the Father in my name, and he shall give you whatsoever you say. Over the last couple of days, I've taught what it means to be in my name. It is to arrive at the point, the same point that Jesus has demonstrated for us when he says, If you've seen me, that would be Jesus. You've seen the Father. To arrive at the point 
But Jesus can say, when they see you, they see me, and thus they see the Father. It gives life to the scripture which says, let your life so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify our Father who art in heaven. Worship and the hidden kingdom. Let me refer, if you will, to the tabernacle of Moses, the tent, if you will, that was set up by Moses, by God, through the hands of Moses. And without going into much study about Moses, let's at least give you a preliminary view. Remember the topic is worship and the hidden kingdom. We enter into the tabernacle of Moses from the outer court and then the inner court and we continue on all the way till we get to the very last place and in that last place is reserved for the very elect few, the priests. And you see, it's not until we get into that last place, the Holy of Holies, where the Father resides, that we can truly say that we've entered into worship before the presence of the Father himself. No flesh can enter into such a space. And so we look back at the grace God has given us to permit us as children our errors and our ways and given us time to mature. But I hear the scriptures which tell us it's time to eat meat and to come off of milk. It's time to mature. You see, at the end of days of time, beginning of eternity. And for many of us, we're already there, but we have to acknowledge that. If so be that you have been born again, your eternal life has already begun. And we are being prepared, if you will, to reign with God, to judge angels, and to partake in the giving birth to a new heaven and a new earth as a member of a new race of beings entitled children of God who have the pure DNA of Christ. Paul spoke of this when he said in Galatians 2 and I believe verses 20 he said the life that he lives is no longer his own but the life in him is Christ and Christ alone. He had come to a point where he is life and Christ's life, but not just emotionally, but actually one. And then he said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And therein is our crossover into worship. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I repeat, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Think about that, if you will, for a bit. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And David said, one thing I desire of the Lord, to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Wisdom is the principal thing, but in all thy getting, get understanding. The purpose of worship, men have written, is to honor, praise, exalt, and please God. That may be true, but I think it's more than that. 
It is not what our adoration shows to God, for God knows our hearts. Worship is really about us. You see, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourself, ourselves, in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift us up. Our worship must be a humble and reverent action. It is not based on worthiness or the excellence of speech or the skills of great musicians. It is much more than that. If there isn't one drum, one organ, one piano, one songster, worship is still possible. Jesus says in John 4, 23 and 24, that is John 4, 23 and 24, Jesus says, the hour is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship who? The Father. The Father. Worship doesn't begin until we enter into the Holy of Holies. On the way there, all the emotional experiences, all of the shaking and crying and the rest may be part of the process. But worship doesn't begin until we reach the Holy of Holies personally and sometimes corporately. But the hour has come and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father, not the Son, not the Holy Spirit, but will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. No flesh can enter into a space of worship. Paul's words again come alive when he says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. True worshipers must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. In spirit, not in flesh, but in spirit. For God is a spirit and they that worship the Father must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And therein lies the first key to understanding worship. In order for us to partake in true worship, we must arrive at a point where our emotions are sensory eye perceptions are not the driving force but we feel don't feel we must arrive at the point where the father through his graciousness opens up the portal and permits us to go beyond the fleshly confines of this life and for that season whether it be a minute, an hour, or a second, to enter into his presence, to enter into another dimension, into into the hidden, the hidden kingdom, to enter into dimensions of light and of real life. Worship begins, or perhaps even activates, or actualizes our opportunity to come into direct contact with the Father. You see, the Father is the object of our spirit. We read in Jeremiah 10, 23. There'll be Jeremiah 10, 23. Lord, Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks 
to direct his own steps. We're not granted an option to direct our own selves in terms of worship. But the Holy Spirit, through the authority and rights afforded us of Jesus, grants us that opportunity to come into the presence of the Father. If there is one aspect of worship that is absolute, it is that we must enter into the presence of the Father in spirit. It is that time, that hour has come and now is, when a true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. It is at that point, while still in this body, we have a moment, a time, a season, where the Lord permits us to go beyond this body and to enter into the next dimension, into the kingdom for which Jesus says he is Lord. Jesus says, I have a kingdom, but it is not of this world. It is a kingdom that can only be experienced through faith. Faith that is given us a measure of by the Father. Worship is a time when we transcend flesh and enter into, enter into dimensions of the kingdom the mystical waters that flow from earth to heaven, the light that shines and says, come unto me all that are burdened and heavenly laden, it is time to spend time with me. That is worship. It is the time when the gates of heaven of the Holy of Holies are opened and the Father says, come, it's time to spend time with me. Jesus said the day would come, the hour would come, when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And the day would come when you would ask nothing of me, but you may go directly to my Father who is in heaven, and he shall give you whatsoever you ask. In this instance, Worship is that time. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord and heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made of hands, on a pulpit, on an organ, piano, drum, at an address, as though he needed anything. So he gives us life, breath, and all things. And he simply says, come. At these seasons, at those moments, we seek to behold him as in a mirror, the Father. This part of our journey is described in Philippians 2 and 12. This part of our journey is described in Philippians 2 and 12. As we enter into worship, we can hear Paul say, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Worship is part of the process of our transfiguration into the image and likeness of God. I'll say salvation is a very serious matter and will not happen by accident. Christ was deliberate and we must be deliberate. Worship and the hidden kingdom open to us at those times. At those times, we don't go to the Father to ask him to give us anything, but like David, 
One thing I desire of the Lord, to dwell in the house of the Lord forever and behold the beauty of his countenance. That is what worship is about. It is about Father. Where are you? In the midst of the darkness, where are you? All I desire today, Lord, All I desire today, Lord, is to behold you and you alone. Worship is that season, that epic, when time stops and in creation it may feel actualizedly, actually be an hour, but it may seem like a second second in it may feel like forever. A place where once you enter into, you never want to leave. And then you could hear Paul when he says, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Yet it is needful that I'm here and so I will return. Worship should cause us to reflect on the majesty of God. And Christ. And the Holy Spirit. And at those seasons, upon our own worthiness, by faith. Because Christ has made us worthy. Through the atonement, the sacrifice, from Gethsemane, the Isle of God in where he was pressed, to Calvary, the cross where he was nailed to the cross, to the tomb from which he rose and he ascended into heaven and said, Father, where I am, I desire that they be also. Worship is that time as James, the half-brother of Jesus, wrote in James 4 and 8, that time when we draw near to God and He will draw near to us. Worship is our spirit through the gift of grace, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the authority of Jesus Christ that gives us access to the Holy of Holies. And at this times we can but bow down. You see, from there, you may emote, you may experience emotions. But those don't come to get us into worship. No, 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 no. They may come as in awe of Him who is able to keep us from falling and to present this faultless before the presence of his glory. Worship may cause us to emote, to cry, to weep, to moan, to scream, to holler, to tear. Because the gracious gift of the Father who gave his only begotten Son that if I would believe in him, if you would believe in him, you would have life and that more abundantly. And the Son loves us so much that he gave his life and called us friend. That is why we are worthy. And we are worthy because Christ has made us worthy. Abraham's faith and your faith is imputed unto you as righteousness. working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Lord, allow me, allow us to enter into the Holy of Holies. Lord, I ask only to see you, to experience you within the atmosphere of glory.
drawing near to you, God, and you draw near to me. I worship not only honors and magnifies God, but it honors and magnifies the God in us. And at those moments, like Moses when he went upon the mountain and came back, he came back forever changed. And like Moses, he needed to go back as the anointing upon his life faded, but would be restored each time he entered into the source of all life. If you took the next moment Just 15 seconds. And resist pride. And concerns about what others are thinking about you. What else is going around you. And you treat this moment as the moment now when true worship God is calling you to the Father God is calling your spirit calling your spirit to enter into truth for the Father is seeking such as worship him God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If you take this moment now, the next 15 seconds, quiet your spirit. Listen to that still, small voice which says, I am here. to that small voice. Seek his face and not his hand. Like Jeremiah 10, 23. Quietly think, oh Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man to walk in his own steps. this moment to see you. Lord, I desire to see you. Lord, God, who made the world and everything in it, the heaven and the earth, Lord, I know you do not dwell temples made with hands as though you needed any for you give life and breath to all things Lord I come to you with fear and trembling Lord if there is anything in my life, any tear along with the wheat, any leaven, I come to you. Lord, forgive me. There it is. Before you enter into worship, it is important that you acknowledge whatever sin that you are aware of on your life. Lord, forgive me my sin. Lord, I choose to turn away from my wicked ways. 
acknowledge and repent. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief, strengthen me and forgive me. Lord, forgive me as I now forgive those who I believe have trespassed against me. Lord, I humble myself and I pray. And I turn from my wicked ways. And I seek your face. Lord, allow me to turn into the space. Holy Spirit, I hear you. This is worship. Working out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. God is near to me. I will draw near to you. If you could possibly reduce this to its simplest form, worship is that time when the Lord permits you and beckons you to come out of this body and to allow your spirit to be present with him. At those times before the Father, all is well. Listen carefully at those times because you see it may be that he's going to impart something to you. And I can promise you this, any time that you worship, you will not come out as you went in. There will always be a change. And so I ask you today, child of God, my brother, my sister, and those I pastor and others, have you taken time today whether it be a second, a minute, 15 minutes, or an hour, have you taken the time to separate yourself from the cares of this world? Turn off the television, turn off the radio, take the cell phone and put it away. Perhaps you have a desire to have some music, but music without words instrumental to allow the Lord to place his words in your heart and not the words of another regarding worship. God has got a word for you and you and you and you individually. And what he has for you is for you. And so you listen. Have you taken that time today? If you haven't, than you ought to. It's time to shut things down for the hour is come and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. For God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This three-dimensional world that we live in is not enough. Enter into the mystical waters and allow the Spirit of the Holy Ghost to bring you into the presence of the Father. For there is everything that you need and have ever imagined. You say, why have I been struggling today? Have you worshiped the Lord today? Have you been in his presence? Why am I empty? Have you worshiped the Lord? Have you been in his presence? As surely as you drink water daily, you must drink the water of faith and of love and of real life. And that it can only be done through your time with the Lord. I pray.
pray that each of you have been blessed by this word tonight. We are going to continue our teaching in other areas. But I felt it was necessary to go back to the beginning. For those of you who are listening in, whether live or recorded, share this word with somebody. Bless them as you are blessed. This is Joe Scott, head of LMI. God bless you. Have a good evening. And may the Lord bless and keep you. And good night. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 7.45 a.m. Bye-bye.